Hello friends and welcome to Edusati. Today we'll be covering the topic of time, speed and distance. The agendas for today's discussion would be we look at the relationship between time, speed and distance, we'll convert the units, we look at the concept of average speed followed by relative speed, we look at both streams and escalators and we'll end up with the concept of circular motion. So let's get started and look at the relationship between time, speed and distance. Now as you would already know, speed is equal to distance over time. Or in other words, distance travelled is equal to speed into time. You would remember it as d is equal to s into t. So speed at which you are travelling into the time for which you have travelled will give you the distance that you have covered. Now if I look at the units, distance always has to be in kilometers or meters, time could be in hours or seconds. Similarly, for this formula, distance kilometers or meters, speed and time have to be in the units, time has to be in hours or second and speed therefore could be in the units kilometer per hour or meter per second depending upon the units of distance and time. Now if I have to convert kilometer per hour into meter per second or vice versa, the relationship that I would use would be something like 1 kilometer per hour is equal to 5 by 18 meter per second. If you want to look at how we get this, 1 kilometer is equal to 1000 meter and 1 hour is equal to 3600 seconds. So if you just solve it out, you get 1 kilometer per hour is equal to 5 by 18 meter per second. I can cross multiply and I can get 18 kilometer per hour is equal to 5 meter per second. This is a very very important relationship that I need to remember if I have to solve the questions. Let's look at the cases that we have when we are moving in a straight line. Now when I'm moving in a straight line there could be three cases which can arise one of which is when your distance is constant. So that means if you are traveling a constant distance, what you are altering is your speed and therefore the time will automatically change. For example, you know you have your house here and your school here. Now the distance between your house and your school is fixed provided you are not taking any alternate, alternate route. You are taking the same route. So this distance that you have is constant. Now, you would understand that if you drive faster, you will reach earlier. If you drive slowly, it will take a longer time to reach school. So, when your distance is constant, speed and time are inversely proportional. If you remember the formula, d is equal to st, when this distance is constant, the product of speed and times would come out to be constant. So, if one thing would increase, the other thing would decrease. So the product of speed and time is equal in both the cases therefore the ratio of speeds would be inversely proportional to the ratio of time. That means if your speed becomes double your time would reduce to half of the original time. If your speed becomes three times your time would reduce to one by three of the original. If you reduce your speed, your time would increase. If you reduce your speed to 1 by 7th of the original, your time will increase by 7 times of the original. Let's look at an example. A man cycles at the speed of 10 km per hour and reaches office at 1 pm. If he cycles at 15, he reaches office at 11 am. At what speed should he travel to reach office at 12 noon? Now the one thing that we need to understand is the distance between his house and his office would remain constant. Then only I can you know solve this question. So if I look at this case, what is the speed in the first case? The speed in the first case is 10. The speed in the second case comes out to be 15. Now if I look at the ratio of their speeds, speed has increased obviously time would decrease. Now if you look at it, speed has become 3 by 2 times. I can write S2 
as 3 by 2 of S1. Speed has increased, time would reduce. Time would become 2 third. Just take the reciprocal. Speed becomes 3 by 2, time becomes 2 by 3 of the original. Okay. So, if I just look at it, if I look at it, originally, originally I was reaching office at 1 p.m. Now, I am reaching office at 11 a.m. So, that means the difference between the two time, T1 is a longer time, T2 is a shorter time. The difference between the two times comes out to be 2 hours. So, this will be T1 minus 2 by 3 T1 comes out to be 2. So, if you solve for the value of T1, T1 comes out to be uh, 1 minus 1 by 1 minus 2 by 3 1 by 3 it will come out to be 6 hours so that means originally you were taking 6 hours to travel that distance between your home and office so if you have to travel the distance you know with 6 hours so if you would have to start yourself 6 hours earlier than 1 pm in the second case in the second case, I am only taking 4 hours. In the second case, when I am reaching office at 11 a.m., I am only taking 4 hours in that case. In The question says, if I have to reach in 5 hours, so that means I have to reach my office now in 5 hours, the distance would still remain the same. If I am able to find out the distance, I can find out the speed with which I travel so that I can travel the same distance in 5 hours. Now, if I look at it, I get the value of T1, I get the value of T2. T2 will be 4 hours. Now, I have the value of speeds as well. Distance would be corresponding speed into corresponding time. 10 6 that means 60 kilometer was the different distance between home and office you can also check with s2 and t2 if you're traveling at 15 you would take 4 hours that means 60 kilometers is the distance that you are traveling so if i have to travel a distance of 60 and reach in 5 hours i would have to travel at a speed of 12 kilometer per hour which is the answer to this question so if i travel at 12 kilometer per hour I'll be able to reach the office at 12 noon. That means I'll take 5 hours to reach the office instead of 4 and instead of 6 in the two cases that I have. The question becomes very simple to solve if you've understood the concept of proportionality. That means if your distance is constant, speed and time are inversely proportional. Another question. Mr. Ghosh arrives office at office 30 minutes late every day on a particular day he reduces his speed by 25 percent now if his speed is reduced his time would increase and hence arrived 50 minutes late instead so the time has increased by 20 minutes find out how much time he would take to travel to his office if he decides to be on time and the second part of the question is if he has to arrive on time by what percentage should he increase his speed now look if I have to solve this question, originally the speed is S. Now what he has done, he has reduced the speed by 25%. 25% means he's reduced with speed with S minus 4. So what is the final speed? It is 3S by 4. Right. So if I look at the initial speed and the ratio of the final speed, it, it looks like something like this, 4 by 3. This is my initial speed. This is my final speed. The ratio of speeds is 4 is to 3. So, the ratio of time would be inverse of this ratio because speed and time are inversely, inversely proportional. So, that means in the first case, I am taking some 3x hours to reach or I would say 3x minutes because the question, uh, the value which is there is in minutes. In the second case, I am taking some 4x minutes to reach. Now, I am late in the first case and the second case as well. So, 
if I look at the difference between the time in the first case and the second case, the difference in the time comes out to be 20 minutes. I am 50 minutes late, I am 30 minutes late. So the difference is there, which is I am late by 20 minutes in the two situations. So the value of x that I get is 20 minutes. That means in the first case, I take total of 60 minutes to reach. In the second case, I take total of 80 minutes to reach. This is my travel time in the first case. This is my travel time in the second case. Now, if I have to reach on time, so that means if I have to reach on time, I am late in the first case by 30 minutes. So that means the travel time should be how much? The travel time should be 30 minutes. Or in the second case, I am late by 50 minutes. So the travel time would have been 30 minutes I would not have been late right so the answer to the first question is how much time would he take to travel if he decides to be on time if he decides to be on time I would have to increase my speed and therefore I would reach there in 30 minutes now if I have to find out how much increase if I look at it I need to increase my speed. I can look at in reference to the 30 minutes thing. So in case the time of travel was 60 minutes, I am moving with the speed s. Now I want to reduce my time of travel to 30 minutes. What should be the speed? Now time has half that means speed would have been doubled. So that means I would have to increase my speed with 100%. I will have to move with double the speed so as to make the time as half. So I have answered both the question. If I have to travel on time, I would have to take 30 minutes only. And if I have to arrive on time, I will have to increase my speed by 100%. Let's look at uh, you know uh, the second thing. I can, I can only find out the time in this case. But to calculate the speed, I am only referring it to the original speed. The distance is not known to me, so I can't find out the exact value of speed. However, I can find out the exact value of time. Now look at the case 2. When time is constant, I know the formula distance is equal to speed into time. So when time is constant, that means d1 is equal to s1t over d2 is equal to s2 t this t is cancelling out d1 over d2 is equal to s1 over s2 that means distance is proportional to speed if you increase your speed your distance traveled would become in would increase if you decrease your speed distance proportional to speed if you increase your speed the distance will also increase if you decrease your speed the distance will also decrease and it is directly proportional it's a case of directly proportional if your speed becomes double distance will become double if your speed becomes half distance will become half of the original distance traveled let's look at with the help of an example Two people start simultaneously from A and B. A, B is 200 km. Let's, let's do it with the help of a you know, figure that we have. So this is point A and this is point B that we have. A and B are 200 km apart. Okay, A starts from this direction, move towards each other. It is very clearly given to you. And their speeds are 60 km per hour and 40 km per hour. They meet at X. They are meeting somewhere here at x. x not, need not be the middle value. Find the ratio of distance covered by them. Now, look at this case. You have to identify the proportionality that we are using here. Both of them started simultaneously. Let me take 10 a.m. Both people have started at 10 a.m. And they meet at x. Meet means obviously they are meeting at the same time. Let me call it at 12. A has travelled for 2 hours, B has also travelled for 2 hours. So time of travel for both of them is same. I can apply the proportionality. Distance is directly proportional to speed. Now distance travelled by A over distance travelled by B will be equal to the ratio of their speeds. More the speed, more will be the distance travelled 
in the same amount of time. So the ratio of the distance travelled by them would be in the ratio 3 is to 2. Again this is a ratio. Total distance if I have to write, I can write it as 3x. The total distance would be 2x. Now if I look and combine, the total distance travelled by them is actually the distance between AB. So 5x is 200. The value of x that I can find out is coming out to be 40. So the distance travelled by A is equal to 3x. So that means A is travelling 120 km and distance travelled by B is equal to 2x. That means B is travelling only 80 km to reach at a point x where the meeting happens. So the only thing that you need to identify is what kind of proportionality is it. In this case, it is a case where time is constant. The third case, third case where distance, where speed is constant. So speed is something which is constant. If speed is constant, distance will be proportional to time. That means for more time you travel, more will be the distance travelled. If you travel for, you know, one hour, you will be travelling some distance. If you travel for two hours, you will be travelling double the distance. If you are travelling for three hours, you will be travelling triple of the distance. So, whatever is the ratio of the distances travelled, same will be the ratio of time. So, if you look at it, there are two cases, there are two cases of directly proportional directly proportional and there is one case that you have for inversely proportional. Inversely proportional is the case where distance is constant. Directly proportional are the case where either T or S is constant. So you just look at the case and you apply the formula accordingly. Average speed, the concept. Average speed is basically the ratio of total distance travelled over total time taken. So if I take what is the total distance travelled and in how much time I have covered that total distance and divide them, I get the value of average speed. So if I am travelling certain distances with certain speeds and I am taking certain times, I add up all the distances divided by the total time taken to cover all the distances that gives me my average speed. Let's understand it with the help of an example. A person travels half the time at the speed of 30 km per hour and the remaining half of the time at 40 km per hour. What would be his average speed? So if I just look here, distance in the first case would depend upon speed in the first case and time in the first case. The speed is 30 and the time is half of the total time. I don't know the total time. Let me call it as t. So the distance is equal to 15 t. The distance in the second case would depend upon speed and time. The speed in the second case is 40. The time is half of the total time. So it will be 20 t. The total distance travelled would be the sum of 15 t and 20 t which will be 35 t divided by the total time which is what? Which is t. So the average speed comes out to be 35 km per hour. 35 km per hour. I can also, you know, look at the formula, look at the end result and, you know, derive the formula as S1 plus S2 by 2. So, if I look at the average of 30 and 40, it is giving me the answer which is 35 kilometer per hour. This simple average formula, this simple average formula will be applied only in the case where time is constant. If time is not constant, I would apply the general formula and that will give me my answer. So if my time is constant or if the time spent are equal, average speed is given by average, simple average of the speeds in both the cases. Case, another case, if the distances covered are same, that means I am travelling a certain distance with certain speed and certain time. I am travelling another part of the distance with some speed and time time. However, this S1 T1 multiplication and this S2 T2 comes out to be same or I am going with some speed 
I would take some time and I'm coming back with another speed. Obviously, T2 would be different. So, this is the case where distance is constant. When distance is constant, average speed is given by harmonic mean of both the values. So, harmonic mean of the two individual values 2 S1 S2 over S1 plus S2. This is the arithmetic mean and that one is the harmonic mean. However, if you do not remember the formula, just use the simple uh, thing which is total distance travelled over total time taken to find out your answer for average speed. All these formulas have been derived from the general formula only. Okay. Let us move ahead and let us talk about the concept of relative speed. Relative speed as the name suggests is the speed of one body with respect to another moving body. Till now whatever we were talking about is the speed with respect to ground and the ground that we take in this case is considered to be stationary. However, when I am talking about the concept of relative speed, I do not take ground as my reference point. My reference point is shifted to another moving object. So, I am seeing how much more is my speed in comparison to another moving object. Right? The reference point is not the ground, the reference point is another moving object. So, as the name suggests, I will compare my speed not with respect to 0, I will compare my speed with respect to a another moving body. We compare the higher with respect to lower. The lower one is taken as the comparison thing. There are two cases when the objects are moving in opposite direction and when the objects are moving in the same direction. The formulas for relative speed change depending upon the direction. Let us look at the first case. The first case is if the two bodies are moving in an opposite direction. Let us look at the example. The two bodies A and B moving with the speeds which are given to you as 20 and 30 in the opposite direction and traveling a total distance of 500. Both A and B have started at the same time and they have met at a point which is C. Now, if I look at it, if the distance traveled by a is x, the distance travelled by B would be 500 minus x and their speeds are three, 330 and 20. So, if I look at, if I look at time taken by each to reach C would be same provided they have started simultaneously, right. So, if I look at it, uh, time taken to reach, uh, time taken uh, to reach C. Relative speed would be given in this case as speed is what? Speed is what? Distance by time. Now, whenever I am calculating relative speed, I would look at not the distance, but I will look at the distance to be covered simultaneously and that has to be the initial distance. So, if I look at it, what is the initial gap between them when both the bodies are moving? That gap is 500 and time taken. They meet up at point C simultaneously after 10 hours of their start. So, that means time taken is 10, uh, 10 and the relative speed turns out to be 50. 50. So, if I look at this 50, if I look at this 50, this is actually equal to S1 plus S2. Relative speed in opposite direction is equal to the sum of their individual speeds. So, if two bodies are moving in an opposite direction, the relative speed will be equal to the sum of their individual speeds. Now, many of you would be wondering how, how I got this 10 hours as the answer. Now, if you look at it, A is traveling 30 meter per second. So, that means in one second, in one second it would be uh, sorry this time would be in seconds. This would be in one second traveling a distance of 30 meters. 
the other one which is b in one second is traveling a distance equal to 20 meters he is doing his job he is doing his job there is no there is no cancellation of the job which is being done or the distance traveled by a and the distance traveled by b are not getting cancelled out so that means in one second they are totally traveling a distance of 50 meter so to travel a distance of 500 meter with a speed of 50 they would have taken 10 seconds or if i look at the answer the relative speed in the opposite direction is the sum of individual speeds reverse case when two bodies are moving in the same direction the reverse case is the relative speed is equal to the difference of their individual speeds now as the concept of relative speed i told you you are measuring the speed of the faster one with respect to the slower one what happens when it is in opposite direction it is actually the difference only but another minus comes because of the sign so the formula becomes sa plus sb the general formula would be sa minus a minus sb but because of a direction thing also another minus comes into picture and you get plus so if i look at in this case the relative direction would be the difference of their individual speeds so if you have to find out the time to catch up or the time to meet up now what is the case a is at this point b is located 500 meters from a both of them are moving in the same direction if i look at it a has a speed which is faster than b so a will be able to a will be able to catch up with B. If the speed of A is less than that of B, he will never be able to catch up with B. The one who is running behind you has to be faster than you to catch you up. If both of them are traveling at the same speed, the distance between them would always remain constant and they would never be able to meet up. So the time taken to catch up time is distance over speed. Now when two bodies are moving and I have to take simultaneously their uh, you know speeds, I would not take the individual speed, I will take the relative speed. So initial, sp initial distance separating them was 500 meter divided by the relative speed. Since two bodies are moving in the opposite direction, relative speed will be the difference of their speed. 30 minus 20, the relative speed is 10 meter per second. Divided, you would get your answer as 50 seconds they will meet up at some point c after 50 seconds of a's start perfectly all right let's move ahead and let's look at the concept of boats and streams it's a case of relative speed with water or the ground not being stationary but moving so if you if you if you just have imagined the scenario where you know there is uh, there's water flowing now water always flows from an upward direction to a downward direction because of gravity so water will always flow in a downward direction if no external force is applied every object which is there in a river will move along with the speed of river so what i'm saying is speed of stream speed of stream is taken as s meter per second that means even if there is no external force a body will move downstream with the speed of the river which is s meter per second and there is a boat which is there in a stream boat has its own individual speed which is b meter per second this speed of boat is the speed of boat in still water that means even if the water is not stationary this is the standalone speed of boat that you have now whenever you are considering a case of a swimming pool or a pond the water is considered as stationary however when you are taking a case of river the water is or a stream the water is considered to be moving so this is the speed of the boat in still water that means even if the water is not moving the boat will be able to move with the speed of b now, when the boat has to move downstream downstream that means down boat is moving downstream that means boat has its own speed b plus water is also moving in the same direction water is trying to help you out water is trying to push you from behind and help you reach your destination faster if you move along with the direction of water or along with the direction of wind it always supports you so the total speed that will be in the downward direction would be b plus s and this will be this will be the same 
all the time the formula would not change because water will never flow upstream it will always move downstream b plus s speed is distance by time distance covered downstream divided by time taken to cover that distance similarly speed upstream now look at it you are trying to move up with the speed of b water is trying to push you water is trying to stop your motion with the speed of s you will be only able to move upstream if your speed is greater than the speed of the stream with the effective speed as b minus s because someone is trying to oppose your motion b minus s and again speed is equal to distance by time so distance covered upstream divided by time taken to cover that distance so for the formula that i'll remember d that is the speed downstream will always be b plus s speed upstream would be taken as b minus s because the water and your boat are moving in opposite direction water will try to create a hindrance and will try to reduce your speed now if you look at it this is just the reverse case of what was happening on the ground on the ground if two bodies are moving in the same direction if two bodies are moving in the same direction the relative speed sorry if two bodies are moving in the opposite direction the relative speed is sum of their speed if two bodies are moving in the same direction the relative speed is difference of their speed whereas here it is just the opposite case when you are moving downstream it is in the same direction so it is added when you are moving upstream it is in the opposite direction here it is subtract so just just you know uh, look at the cases very very carefully when on the ground it is a normal relative motion when on the water it will be uh, the reverse case because water flows in only one direction if i just add the two equations i can get the value of Uh, b and s b is the value of speed of the boat now speed of the boat in still water is the average of upstream and downstream speed if i subtract the two equations i would get the speed of stream as half of the difference between the downstream and the upstream speed the thing to remember is if the distance covered upstream and downstream is same so if you look at it distance is constant i can apply the proportionality speed is inversely proportional to time so time would be inversely proportional to speed time downstream speed downstream inversely proportional time upstream speed upstream inversely proportional so the ratio of time would be inversely proportional to the ratio of their speeds upstream speed will always be b minus s and downstream speed will always be b plus s this will be always the case there are no ifs and buts that you'll have here circular motion circular motion is basically the movement of the two bodies around a circular track it's a very very logical extension of the linear motion that we have just done people instead of walking around a linear track will move around a circular track now since it is an enclosed track that means the starting point and the ending points probably can be the same if people keep on running people are bound to meet they may meet after one round two round three round four round n rounds of another m rounds of the second one but they are bound to meet because they are moving on an enclosed track let's let's understand it with the help of a few examples there are there, there are two people a and b which are starting from the same point with varying speeds speed of a is 10 speed of b is 5 now if you look at it speed of a is double the speed of b that is given to me in the question the total length of the circular track is what i have to look at because if i am given the radius i will be converting it into the circumference to get the length of the track now if radius is given to you you can follow the formula 2 pi r to convert it into the circumference or the perimeter of the circle this is also equal to pi t so depending upon what is given to you in the question you can always convert it into the length of track 
Now, the case 1 that I am taking is they are running in the same direction. So, that means A and B both are running in the clockwise direction. Clockwise direction is what I am assuming them to run. Now, if I look at it, in the first round, when A and B start simultaneously, A has a greater speed. A will move ahead of B. He will keep on moving and he will complete one round without being able to meet with B. So, when A completes his first round, when A completes his first round, B is somewhere in the middle. B is not able to complete one round. So, A and B are not meeting up. If A continues his motion, A will come from behind and will meet up with B. So, they will meet up for the first time when the faster one, which is A in this case, has taken one extra round over the slower one. They will always meet up when the faster one covers one extra round over the slow one. This will be the point or the time of their first meeting. The second meeting will happen when the faster one covers two extra rounds. The third meeting will happen when the faster one covers three extra rounds and so on. For the nth meeting, the faster one will have to cover n extra rounds over the slower one. This means for the first meeting, a will have to cover 500 meters extra than B to meet up. Since both of them are moving, I would take the concept of relative speed and not the individual speed. And they are moving in the same direction. All of these things is happening on the ground. I will not take the case of streams and boats. I will look at the normal thing. That means I will look at the relative speed moving in same direction. Relative speed moving in same direction would be given by S1 minus S2. Then I will follow the formula time taken to meet up. Time would be what? Distance by relative speed because both of them are moving. Now the distance that I had is basically the distance that one needs to cover extra over the other. So B has to cover one extra round. I will take 500 as the distance that has to be covered over relative speed which will be 10 minus 5 because both of them are moving in the same direction. I get my answer as 100 seconds. That means A and B will meet up for the first time after 100 seconds of their start. I can find out the location as well. If I have to find out the location, I will look at where, where is A after 100 seconds. Now I know a covers one round 500 meters at the rate of 10 meter per second. So, if I look at you know time taken by A, it is 500 meters at the rate of 10. So, that means it is taking 50 seconds to cover one round. So, 100 seconds that means A would have covered two rounds and B would have covered only one round till then perfectly all right. So, they meet up at the starting point itself when A has covered two rounds and B has covered one round. Once they meet up at the starting point, the next meeting will happen after the multiple of their first time meeting. So, if they have met after 100 seconds, the next meeting would happen again after 100 seconds. The next again after 100 seconds, after 100 seconds and so on. So, the time gap after two consecutive meetings would always remain constant provided they don't change their speeds and they don't change their direction while moving along a circular track. So, now if I have to, you know, again uh, look at this. A will be back to its original starting point after ever, every 500 by 10. That means 50 seconds. That means A will be at the starting point. This at 50, 100, 150, 200, 250, 300 and so on. If I talk about B, B will be at the starting point after every distance by speed. 100 seconds. This is known as time period of B and time period of A. Time period refers to the time after which the thing starts, you know, repeating itself or the motion is starting to replicate itself. 
so b will be back to its starting point at 100 200 300 400 500 and so on now if I look at it, A and B together will be at the starting point, starting point for the first time after the LCM of their individual time periods. Why LCM? Because I need a common time at which both TA and TB will be together. TA is back after every multiple of 50, TB is back after every multiple of 100. Since I need a common time, I will look at LCM of their individual time periods that means LCM of 50 and 100 which comes out to be 100 they will be together at starting point after every 100 seconds so 100 200 300 400 and so on I hope the concept is clear if not you can always go back and you know play the video again to understand this concept let's look at case 2 same case same circumference same speed but what is happening now the people are running in opposite direction one is running in a clockwise direction the other one is running in an anti-clockwise direction now if I look at it here the first meeting will happen in the first round itself now if I look at it A is coming from here B is coming from here and they meet here in the first round itself so A is not taking one extra round over B, but A and B combined together are taking one round. So the distance that the distance that needs to be taken is again equal to the circumference of the circle, which is equal to 500 meters. This distance is actually the initial gap separating A and B. They will meet for the first time when both of them collectively cover one round and they will meet up now in every round that means a and b will have to cover 500 meters in total with a relative speed what will be the relative speed when two bodies are moving in opposite direction it is the sum of their individual speeds so relative speed would be 10 plus 5 15 i put it in the formula time is equal to distance by relative speed distance is 500 relative speed is 15 that means they will meet up for the first time after 33.33 seconds this is the point this is the time of their first meeting and i can always find out the location of their first meeting as well this will be the location where they are meeting b is traveling for b is traveling for this much b is traveling for 33.33 second a is also traveling for the same amount of time so when time is constant uh, time is constant distance is proportional to speed since the speed of a is double than the speed of b the distance traveled by a will also be double the distance of b so i can divide this thing into three equal parts a is traveling two parts b is traveling one part this is the point where they meet for the first time now if i have to look at their next meetings the next meetings will happen after a multiple of 33.33 seconds. Now if I look here, B will continue moving in this direction and A will continue moving in the anti-clockwise direction. So B travels one part, A travels two parts. So A is here, A will travel one part and two parts. This is the point of their second meeting. Third meeting, B travels one part. And A is already there. A is traveling two parts. This is the point of their third meeting. Now, if I look at it in uh, the starting point, meeting point of view, A will be back to starting point after every 50 seconds. That means it will be back at 50, 100, 150, 200, 250, 300 and so on. B will be back to its original starting point after every 100 seconds. That means 100, 200, 300, 400 and so on. If I have to find out the time that they will be together at the starting point. Starting point, not the first meeting, but the starting point. That will be the LCM of the individual time period, which will be LCM of 50 and 100. That will be 100. So now, if you look at the two cases. Even when they are moving in the opposite direction or they are moving in the same direction, their time of meeting at the starting point does not change. But what change is the time of their first meeting. When they are moving in the opposite direction, they will move faster. When they are moving in the same direction, they will meet up probably at a slower pace of time. 
Now let's look at the case where trains are crossing each other. When two trains are crossing each other or a train is crossing a pole or a train is crossing the platform, the time taken to completely cross each other or the time taken to completely cross the other one is given as distance over speed. The distance that we'll take in this case would be the length of the two trains in case two trains are crossing each other. Length of train 1 plus length of train 2. In case the train is crossing a platform instead of length of train 2, I will take the length of the platform. In case you know uh, the train is crossing a pole or a man, the length of a pole or the length of the man is considered to be 0 divided by the relative speed. Now relative speed would depend upon the direction of motion. If the trains would be moving in the same direction, the relative speed would be given by the difference of the speeds of their individual trains. If the two trains would be moving in the opposite direction, the relative speed would be given by the addition of their individual speeds. Now in case the train is completely crossing a platform or a pole or a man, the speed of the second object would be considered zero in that case. The important point to notice that the distance that is covered, which is the numerator, will always be the sum of lengths of the two trains or the sum of length of the train and the platform irrespective of the direction of the moment. The numerator will always be added whereas the direction will affect the denominator whether I should use a plus sign or a negative sign. Let's let's understand it with the help of an example. There's a train which takes 10 seconds to cross a pole and 20 seconds to cross a platform which is 100 meters long. What is the length of the train? Now let me say the length of the train is S L. Uh, the, uh, the train is only crossing a pole. So pole is considered to be of what? Zero length. I'll take plus zero over. The speed of the train is S. What about the pole? The pole speed is again zero. So it will actually be equal to L by S and the time which is taken here is 10 seconds. In the second case, the train is crossing a platform which is 100 meter long. So the total length will be the length of the train plus the length of the platform divided by the speed of the train and what about the speed of the platform? It is stationary. So I will get this equal to 20. I can split this up L by S plus 100 by S equal to 20. I know the value of S by L by S is 10. So the value of 100 by S becomes 10. The value of S is 10 meter per second. So that means the speed of the train is 10 meters per second. What will be the length of the train? I'll put it back into this equation in the first equation that I have. L by S. L by S is equal to 10. So the value of L, the length of the train is 100, meet, 100 meters. So it's a 100 meter long train. Another uh, view to look at this question is speed of the trains remain constant and pole and platform does not offer any speed. So if the time is getting doubled, the distance would have also doubled in this case. So the platform is 100 meter long, which is double the distance that I am uh, this 100 plus L is actually double the distance that I am traveling in the first case. So I can solve it out for the value of L which comes out to be 100 meters. Let's look at some of the questions of circular motion. A can run a full round of circular track in 6 minutes and B can run one full round in 15 minutes. Now this 6 minutes and 15 minutes are time periods. Time period is basically the time taken to cover one circular round. In one circular round, what I am covering is the circumference of the circle. So the distance covered is the circumference of the circle. Uh, in case you want to proceed with the question, you can assume any value for the circumference of the circle, x, y, z or 1000 meters. Anything that you get will not affect your final answer. So what I do is, I take the LCM of TA and TB. So if I take the LCM of TA and TB, so it comes out to be 30. I will assume that the length of the track is 30 meters for an easy answer. 
so if i look at the first question which is there when would they meet at the starting point for the first time now starting point meeting starting point meeting is given by lcm of their individual time period because ta a is back to its original position after every ta time b is back to its original position after every tb time so it is back after every 6 it is back after every 15 both of them will be together for the first time after 30 minutes obviously the number of rounds that each one of them would have covered would not be the same a would have covered 5 rounds till then and b would have covered 2 rounds till then so a and b have covered 5 and 2 rounds and they are meeting up for the first time at the starting point after 30 minutes the next part of the question is when would they meet for the first time if they are running in the same direction if they are running in the opposite direction now if they are running in the same direction when they are running in the same direction the relative speed would be given as the difference of their speeds so i need to know their speeds now what i'll do is here i have assumed the length to be 30 meters so when i know the length i can find out their speeds speed of a would be 30 me 30 meters is covered in 6 minutes so speed is 5 meters per minute what about the speed of b speed of b would be 30 meters is covered in 15 minutes so it will be 2 meters per minute the other way of doing this question is you know that the length is constant so speed and time are inversely proportional i have the ratio of their time which is 6 by 15 in a simplest form i can write it as 2 by 5 so the ratio of time would be inverse of that ratio which is 5 by 2 so i can take that values and i can start with the question so if i look at it the relative speed when they are moving in the same direction would be 3 meters per minute and the relative speed when they are moving in an opposite direction would be given by the sum of their individual speed which comes out to be 7 meters per minute now if i look at the question time for a to meet up with b would be given by now who is the faster one a is the faster one as compared to b i have this greater than this so a will take lesser time and b will take greater time to cover one round that is very obvious to me in the question also 6 and 15 the faster one will always catch up with the slower one so a will have to cover one extra round over the slower one to catch up with it one extra round means the distance that a will have to cover additional would be 30 with a relative speed of 3 so that means they will meet up for the first time after 10 minutes of the start now this point will not be a point starting with starting point because the starting point first meeting is happening at 30 minutes this is the first meeting this would happen inside the circle the next meeting would happen at multiples of 10 so it will be a 20 minutes the third meeting will happen at 30 minutes this 30 minutes meeting is their first meeting at the starting point so when they meet for the first time at the starting point they have actually met thrice the second case time for a to catch up with b is given by both of them would have to cover the circumference with their relative speed so that comes out to be around 4.2 minutes so the time would be much 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 lesser as compared to the first case because they are moving in the opposite direction and the relative speed is the sum so the next meeting would happens at multiples of 4. Two. Now, if you look at it, the seventh multiple of four point two would give me an answer which is thirty minutes. So, the first time, first time that they have met up at the starting point is actually their seventh meeting. I hope you have understood the question. Let's look at the next part of the question. The next part says, how many time would they have met in time? In the time B has completed ten rounds in the same direction and in the opposite direction. So let's take a case when they are moving in the same direction. The speeds of A were the speed of A was five meters per minute, and speed of B was coming out to be two meters per minute. Now, when they are when they are meeting up, when they are running in the same direction and meeting up. if you if you just go back to the previous slide and look at it what we have done is we have understood that when a has completed 5 rounds b would have completed 2 rounds 
right i'm talking about the same direction case and the third meeting if you look at it the third meeting will happen at the uh, at the starting point so b completes b completes two rounds in 30 minutes and they have met three times so that means when b has done two rounds when b have done two rounds they have they have met three meeting they have met three times and in the subsequent time a has done five rounds so if i just look at this when b has completed 10 rounds so b has done 10 rounds into 5 how many meetings would have happened into 5 they would have met up for 15 times every third meeting happening at the starting point let's look at the second case when they are moving in an opposite direction okay in an opposite direction when a covers 5 rounds now this will come out to be same b will have covered two rounds now this was the time when they meet up at the starting point starting point meeting is independent of the direction till the time this has happened 30 minutes have passed and a and b if you again look back to your previous slide would have met how many times seven times their seventh meeting happens at the starting point so a and b have done seven meetings so when b covers 10 rounds they would have done, they would have uh, sorry 10 rounds so that means five times of this they would have met 35 times so 35 meetings would have happened when a and b when b has completed 10 rounds in the same time a would have covered 25 rounds and the number of meetings would be the respective answers 15 and 35 Let's look at another question. Lakshman joins Saurav and Sachin, and all of them run on a circular track of length 500 meter in the same direction from the same point simultaneously. Lakshman moves at three, Sachin at five, and Saurav at eight. When will they be together again for the first time, and for the first time at the starting point? So if I look at it, time period for Lakshman, time to cover one round. What is the length? 500. How much? Five hundred is in meters, so I will convert it into kilometer because the speed is in kilometer per hour. What is the speed? Three. So time will be distance by speed. I'll not solve it. Let me keep it like this. Time by such a, or oh sorry, by sort of. It will be distance by the speed of sort of, which is speed of sort of is eight. Time taken by such a. Distance. and speed such in speed is 5 so this is their individual time periods this is their individual time periods when they when they meet up at the starting point so my answer to b part of the question would be when they meet up for the first time at the starting point would be lcm of their individual time periods time period for lakshman saurav and time period for such in so if i just look at it It is point five by three LCM of point five by three, point five by eight, and point five by five. I have to take LCM of this. Now LCM of fractions is given by LCM of numerator and HCF of denominator. So what is the LCM of point five, point five, and point five? It will be point five. And denominator the HCF is one. So they meet up. They meet up. After point five hours, uh, that means after thirty minutes, all of them meet at the starting point after thirty minutes. Now let's look at the first part of the question for the first time. Whenever I'm asking, uh, whenever I'm solving a question for the first time, I will use the concept of relative speed. Now since there are three bodies, I can't use the formula for three bodies at the same time, so I'll divide them into pair. That means time taken for If I just look at it, Saurav is the fastest one. Saurav speed time taken for Saurav to catch up with Lakshman will be given by the distance that Saurav will be covering extra for one round, which will be the length of the track point five divided by their relative speed. Since both of them are moving in the same direction, 
the relative speed would be this difference of both the speeds so if i just look at it they meet up they like saurav and lakshman meet up for the first time after 0.1 hours 0.1 hours is when they meet up for the first time now look at let's look at the case where saurav meets up with sachin again saurav will have to cover one extra round over sachin so saurav will meet up sachin after point 5 by 3 hours now all of them have to be together that means saurav lakshman and sachin all of them have to be together so that means i will have to take the individual lcm of their individual time periods so i will again take the lcm i it is better for me to convert it into a fraction mode because an lcm is an easier lcm of numerators hcf of denominator my answer is 0.5 hours or 30 minutes so what have i derived their first meeting at the starting point is actually the meeting for the first time that means they are only meeting up at the starting point nowhere in between the circle they are meeting up the first meeting is happening at the starting point itself